Hey, how you going? I'm Glenn. I'm going to talk to you about some of my issues at the moment, and they pertain to Putin. And I've done it in art and. So the first one's art and borders. Now, borders means walls. Uh, Trump and the war with Mexico is an example. But in 2016, at the Geographic Awards held in Russia, Putin said Russia's borders do not end. Wow. And that's what this means, the extent that Putin will go to to get what he wants. And that is the borders keep going out no matter what, and people are dying. Children are dying. And that's what this depicts. Forced movement. That's the stop culture in Russia. It's, it's art and diaspora. Now, the Financial Times on March 8th this year reported that Putin's exiled people are too frightened to speak up in case of repercussions to their families. And that's what this piece is about, art and diaspora. Then that leads on to art and colonialism. This is like the forced acquisition of land, the British when they came to Australia initially, uh, that's colonialism. Now, Putin is trying to restore the status as the colonizer of Europe. Um, and that was reported uh, by Soapbox on the 22nd of February. He, he wants to go back to the old socialist where he is the, 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 the force colonialism coloniser of the whole of Europe. And that's what this is about, Putin and the puppets. Um, like uh, Obama and uh, Biden, uh, this is Putin, and we've got the, the different currencies of the world, and people that aren't standing up because Putin will do whatever he takes, and also threatens nuclear war. So that's Putin's puppets. Then that leads on to gender. Putin and gender, art and gender. Now, gender's primarily male and female, right? Well, wrong, because nowadays we've got all the pluses, the days and the in-betweens. Now, no disrespect intended, but we're all people, right? Now, on the 23rd of December 21, 2021, the Washington Post quoted Putin as comparing gender non-conformity to the corona pandemic, to the coronavirus. Now, 70%, 77%, well, just under 77% of Russians um, voted for Putin and Putin's view on Russia and socialism. So by default, by default, Putin is about male, he's about female and nothing else. And that's what this depicts, Putin killing anything that's not male or female. Then we go on to Putin and his view on feminism. He has no view on feminism. It's a viper pit. Now, foreign policy on in 2018, the 9th of April, reported that Putin and the Russians, the Russian government, which is called, I think it's pronounced Duma, they decriminalised domestic violence. And what that meant is that if you're a woman and you're in a house with an abusive man, or vice versa, I've been in relationships where I've been hit, um, so I know what it's like, or vice versa, that if it's not more than once a year, and you don't have broken bones and things, it's not a criminal act. Putin has been reported, and you can Google it, as the extreme gangster. And then that leads on to art and identity. This is Putin's cancel culture. Now, I read the book, uh, it was called uh, The Red Mirror, uh, in reference to this and what I'm doing now, uh, which is... Uh, about my, my my issues, my issues journal, uh, and that is, and then reports that um, Putin uh, wants to have that one identity, he wants to return to that socialist Russia, and anything that isn't socialist Russia, it, it's just cancelled, and that's Putin's cancel culture. And then that leads into Putin, or art, and ethics. Ethics, I've always believed just because you can do something doesn't mean you should do it. So when we talk about ethics, David DeCoss, now he's of the Catholic Makula campus for applied ethics. Now he wrote on March 22nd, uh, this year, 2022, that Putin has decided to kill Ukrainian 
civilians in order to eradicate non-Putin-esque values. So he writes that Putin will do whatever it takes because he can. So it's the I will and I can culture of Putin. And, and an example is this Putin evacuated, and this is, you can Google this, he evacuated or agreed to evacuate civilians uh, during the war with Ukraine. And then uh, throughout the evacuation of the, the civilians, he's killing them because he can. And that, because Putin wants that socialist, the, 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 the old Nazi, bleh. Anyway, that leads on to Putin and the economy. Oh, that's what this one's about. Putin and the economy. On the Market Watch on 20th of April 2022 reported that Putin has launched um, an the first ever economic world war. And that's, again, with, against um, the, the Ukrainians and Volensky. Now... But Putin's focus, so here's the thing that gets me, and this is what this is about, that Nazi culture, Putin, Nazi, Hitler, it's always been about himself. He was gifted $2 billion in artwork, and he's got the Russian police, so the government paying for that artwork to be kept safe. So, you know, guards outside the doors and those sorts of things. And then Van Dyke, Van Gogh, I mean, famous paintings and that's what this represents because they're some of the art artists that have been gifted to Putin two billion dollars Putin is about Putin so that's art and the economy and then we've got this shh culture in Russia so this is art and social justice Lapa Lapa isn't a Russian word but it, it's the pronunciation of the word, and it means sweetie pie. So this is shh, shh. So telling family and loved ones to be quiet because on the 2nd of March, Open Democracy reported that the invasion of Ukraine is a breach to international law. In the 22nd of December 2015, Human Rights Watch reported that it's been made criminal to speak up against Russia, against Putin's Russia. So what this is about is telling loved ones and family members, just be quiet, don't say anything. Because if you do, you could be arrested, you'd be killed, and it goes on. And that leads into the final one. <laughs> now these art pieces were only meant to be, be a few hours, but some of them have taken me 10 hours or more, and that's just uh, on the support. Uh, without planning. So this last one is about art and access. So all over the, the all the newspapers, India Today and the Garden, Guardian, uh, they reported that captured Russian soldiers are speaking of, they're speaking in anger about being duped into the war with Ukraine. Uh, they're using words like faggots and things like that, which I really hate because I was called that as a kid. Uh, I'm straight. But anyway, so saying that they were duped into this war. So this is about access to information. In Russia, the social media platforms like Instagram, Twitter have all been shut down. So there is no access to information, legal access to information outside of the Russian borders. And again, that goes back to the first slide uh, of Art and Borders. So we've cycled back round. I'm gonna close it there and just say that art's meant to heal. So, Fingers crossed. Hope you enjoyed my probably more than five minute presentation, but there it goes. Peace out.